Hello, hello, welcome to a maker studio. I'm Cheryl and I create over on the Home of My Making Facebook page. I'm here today to do a really fun project. We're gonna be using resin today. And if you have never used resin, don't be intimidated. Very, very simple project. And it's a rewarding project after you have your finished product. So as you guys hop on, let me know where you're watching from and let me know if you've ever worked with resin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have two measuring cups. Now, one of the important things with resin is the ratios. There's two ways that you can do resin. You could do a 50-50 mix and it would be hard. And then you could do a 60-40 mix and it would be pliable. So when you take the resin, which comes in two different bottles, there's A, which is the resin, and B, which is the hardener. So the first thing you want to do, we have these silicone cups. They do have measuring um, measurements on the side. So I'm going to do it a little bit pliable today. So that's a 60-40 mix. 60 resin, 40 hardener. Now, if you notice, that's a little bit off. It's not as equal parts. So the hardener will not harden the resin as much. If you want it totally hard, it's a 50-50 mix. 50 resin, 50 hardener. So here we go. There are measurements on the side. So there's a 60 and a 40 that I know where it's at. I'm going to put 60% resin in this cup. It is important to get your measurements right as far as your hardener and your resin. So the resin I'm going to put up to the 60 marker on my cup. Two things I want you to know. When you're working with these resins. I do recommend gloves and a mask. I'm not going to be using that on this live. I am in a well ventilated area, but we do have the lowest VOCs in our resin. It's also non-yellowing. I'm going to put the hardener at 40 in this particular cup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine them. So I'm going to pour the hardener into the resin. One of the important steps also when you're dealing with resin is to stir it for approximately three minutes. And that's a very, very, very important step. We have a, a bunch of different molds for the resins. We have a bunch of different um, fondant molds for the resins. All the supplies that I am using are up in the description section of this tutorial, so you could check it out. So I'm going to stir this for three minutes. Now, it's very important that you get it mixed together and you, again, get your, your measurements accurate. So because I'm making this a pliable resin, which means it's gonna be able to be bent, I did the 60-40 mix, but normally all your resins are done at a 50-50 ratio. So when you're doing the molds that we have that are the uh, tea lights and the photo frames, you usually want the 50-50 mix. But for this particular project, I am going to have it a little bit pliable. So you're going to mix that, like I said, for three minutes. I do have a silicone mat underneath me because it's easy to wash it off a silicone mat. And speaking of washing your resin, I highly recommend Clean Slate to do that. Clean Slate is a furniture clean cleaner, but it does get resin off of everything. It also helps when you're washing out your cups that you mix your product in. One of the ways that I like to deal with the cleanup process is wipe as much out of the cups with a paper towel at, that you can, and then go in with a rag and some clean slate and finish the removal process. So I'm still mixing this. 
So what I'm going to be using today is a fondant mold. And let me show you. So another thing we're giving away, resin and the mold. So you're going to get the two pack of resin and this mold. So don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial. So see this mold? It's a floral mold. And um, actually, I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> it's right over here. I'm going to use this one instead. It's a, it is a floral mold again. And um, look at all the detail in there. So once you place your resin in there, it's going to fill the mold and you're going to let it dry overnight. And then you'll be able to pop them right out of the mold. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the pour process. I'm going to put that on my silicone mat again. Um, this has got a lot of intricate pieces in here and you do want to fill it till it's level. Also do it on a level work surface. And also when you're letting it sit overnight, make sure you sit it on a level work surface. So again, if you guys are just hopping on, I'm Cheryl from over the home of my making Facebook page where I create a lot of projects using a maker studio products and we're using a resin product right now. Just stirring that. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna take my little stir out of there and I'm gonna pour it into the mold. It'll level itself out. Again, work on a level tabletop. This is such a fun medium to work with. If you get it on top, just smooth it into the mold. And it'll enter all the little cracks and crevices. I am going to help it along with my little stick over here. And you do want to get it level to the top of the mold. You want to fill it to the top. This is a really, really pretty mold. It's got a bunch of florals in it. It's got some stems and some leaves. These are the little leaves over here. Again, you can go back after it's leveled out to see if you got it even with the top of the mold. When I'm doing these little pieces, I like to make it work off of the um, stirring stick so that I get it in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that and go over it and just get it into all the cracks and crevices. Look at it from all angles because it is clear just to see if you have gotten it full to the top of the mold. This way you use the whole entire thickness of the mold. This is a really, really, really fun medium to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this off to the side, give myself a paper towel to put it on. What I like to do before it starts to harden up too, is I usually take a little bit of a paper towel and some clean slate. And if I had gotten any of it off of the um, mold, I just clean the mold up before it hardens. This way it doesn't harden on the mold. I just take a little bit of clean slate on a rag. And then I just get the excess off if I happen to get anything on the mold. Simple and easy. Now, you do want this to lay on a level surface overnight. So just make sure you do that. So through the magic of this video, I do have them all done already. So here are all the pieces that came out of that mold. So when we say they're pliable, you can bend them. 
okay? So if you do it at a 50-50 mix, you don't have that bendability. So that's the difference between doing at a 50-50 ratio and then a 60-40 ratio. So in this tutorial, I did a 60-40 so that we can have some bendability for depending on what project you're working on, um, whether you need to do that. So look, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with this wooden frame that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to take the uh, glass out of it in the beginning to do this project. So how do you get the molds onto your surface? I'm going to use a combination right now of some glue E6000 and some hot glue. And the reason why I'm using the hot glue is just because I'm on a live and I want it to stick right away instead of waiting for it to dry. But normally I would just use some kind of super glue. So I'm going to see where I want my molds to go. Let's see. So watch. So since I can move that a little bit, I'm going to bend it. And then I think I'm just going to put some leaves there. I don't have to use the whole entire mold. Let's see. So see how that looks? Let's make sure I have it on there. So I'm just looking for my placement right now. And let's see, do I want to put something over here? Yeah. I think I'm going to put that little bud there. Do I want a little leaf over here too? No, I think I'm just going to put that little bud there. So I think that's all I'm going to use on this particular project. So I put the floral with the stem that I curved a little bit and then the leaf. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this E6000 glue. And again, you could use super glue. But because I'm also on this live, I'm going to use a hot glue at the same time. This way, this will just keep it glued down so I can continue the rest of my project. This adds so much dimension to your project, these molds. I'm just going to press it down, making sure that it's not hung over. Just make it flush with your surface. What do you guys think of this? What do you think of the resin? It's really fun. You can make jewelry. You can make um, candle holders. You can make coasters. We have a bunch of different um, molds. And then we have a bunch of different fondant molds. And every one of them pair well with the resin. So just going to put a little bit of glue there. And then this one, I'm just going to bend a little bit just to have the stem curved. And that's where that 60-40 mix comes in. A little bit pliable. If I wanted to hang this off the side, I would be able to do that based on my ratio that I used with my resin to get the curvature. Just trying to get that hot glued on there. Put a little bit of hot glue on to my surface just to temporarily get it there. The E6000 will have to dry overnight. That's why I got the hot glue on there so I can continue with my project. So again, don't forget, if you just hopped on, I'm Cheryl. I work over on the Home of My Making Facebook page, creating a lot of projects. I took our resin and 4060 mix into the mold, let it sit overnight, popped it out, and now I'm applying it to this frame. I love flowers, so this is a perfect mold for me. And I do have another mold that I showed you in the beginning, and this one is really pretty too. It's all different kinds of greenery leaves. and. Again, I did that at a 60-40 uh, mix, so you could see this one especially because there's narrower pieces that bend. See how that is? 
So that, I can't wait to do a project with that. And then I'm just gonna hit this little bud over here that will just stick over here on this little section. And I close up my glue, make sure everything is adhered down before I start the next part of the project. And get rid of all my little glue strings. So look how pretty that looks. Now, let me show you how we're gonna make that pop off of this frame. I'm going to take some of the one step paint. I love this color. It's a linen color, kind of like a beigey white. And I did put it in another little container that I can work out of. So what I want to do is let's see if you can see that I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to go over the whole entire frame with this color. Now this is a one-step chalk base paint. One step doesn't always mean one coat. Sometimes I am able to get it with one coat just because the wood is taking it in the right way. So if you just hopped on, we are giving away this mold and the resin. So if you want to be in the giveaway, don't forget to tag three friends and comment below, share the video, share the video. Also, let me know if you have ever used resin and if you've used a Maker Studio resin. And if you have any questions about the resin, you can leave them in the comments below also. Okay, so I'm just getting this side for now with this one-step paint and resin. Again, all the products that I'm using are available up in the description section of this video. You can go up there when we're done and check out all the products. So now I'm going to take it over the resin and it's going to be able to show the detail. Just trying to get every nook and cranny. It adds so much dimension to a flat surface. You could also use gilding with our um, molds, like if I wanted to gild that flower, I would have done that before I applied it to the surface. In this case, I'm just going to paint it on the surface after I had glued it on there. Just making sure I get all little nooks and crannies. This will really make it pop because you'll be able to see all of the detail now in the design. What do you guys think so far? What do you think? Remember, this started out as just a plain box frame that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. And then I'm just applying a little bit of this linen one step paint. I am gonna get on the inside of this frame And then I'm going to get this little guy over here. I'm 
did a good job um, with just one coat. I'm going to dry it quickly with a heat gun. Technically, that's not part of the way we do the paint. You can let it air dry and then continue with a second coat. But I do want to get it dry quicker on this live. So I will be using a heat gun to hurry up the process a little bit. Hurry up the process. Just going over the top just to get any excess paint in this detail. it up and just look at it from a different angle because it's got so many nooks and crannies in this particular detail so you see how I got that isn't that beautiful it really is a rewarding process when you're working with resin it's just coming to life Just going to go around, make sure I don't have any pulling with the um, paint and that I got all of the detail because I don't want to miss any of that detail. So what do you guys think so far? put this to the side it did do a pretty good job of covering it with one coat I am going to take my heat gun further away just because I don't want anything to melt and if as I'm doing this I see some place that I missed just gonna go hit it as it dries I could see I think it's really pretty. It really changed the frame up. It's getting a little bit. Once that paint dries pretty quick, because it is a water-based paint, so it usually only takes about 20 minutes to dry. But since I'm on this live, I wanted to um, speed up the process with my heat gun, which technically isn't the process. See the, see the dimension on that? So that, isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna do one more thing to the project. I have some embellishing wax in copper. So yes, we have embellishing wax at a maker studio. I'm gonna use my finger. You have to get into your project. You have to get into your project. And I'm just going to gently do it over the top of the detail of the mold. Since that linen color is a little flat, I thought that the combination of the copper would look great. I'm just grazing the top surface with my finger. It's always fun using your fingers as a tool when it comes to creating. Can you see what's happening here? Let me show you. Can you see the detail now? See how that's 
I'm just grazing the top of it with the copper and it's accentuating the detail. We do have embellishing wax in gold and silver, but I thought the copper would pair well with the linen color. And you could add as much or as little as you want. It's definitely making the design pop more as I graze over the indentations of the mold. Now, let me just get this one over here and show you what I have. I think I'm going to take it around the edge of the frame also, just to give it a little detail. I wish you could really see what this looks like. It's beautiful. I get it on there, just get it a little bit off. I'm gonna do the inside of the um, frame, picture frame too. If I got a little bit too much on there, I'm just gonna take some, take some water get it off before it dries and then, there you go just a little bit this is just going to accentuate everything do it on the corners too just to make the outline of the box again you could add as much or as little as you want it definitely brought up the color of the uh, one step paint Take my finger. So what do you guys think? See how that accentuated that a little bit? Simple, simple, easy. Looks like it's been around forever, right? Looks like it's antiqued. Again, just let me get. So what do you guys think? Isn't that beautiful with that little bit of copper, some resin on a flat surface? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the frame back together. in the back and finish off my project. Again, don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial and you will be in the giveaway for this mold and the resin. And you could experience how much fun it was to create with resin. There you go. What do you guys think? Isn't that beautiful? See how that little bit of detail on the copper made it change from when I just had it painted with the with just the linen one-step paint? So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. It was fun creating it. The fondant molds are fabulous to work with. Don't forget wear your gloves and your mask while you're working with it. And tag three friends in the comments below and share this tutorial and you will be in the giveaway for the... <coughs> the resin and the mold. So thanks guys. Have a great day.